I would say that seeding thus far, you know, sometimes you'll see a situation where seeds seem dramatically off, either good for the team that was seeded off or bad for them. I, it, it seems pretty accurate, I'd say, at this point. So I'm happy with that. And uh, so in the lanes where we're racing, the lanes matter, especially in an outdoor sport. We're kind of right in the middle. In other words, one, two, three, four, five, we're in three. So if there's lane advantage, we'd have the third most disadvantage, the uh, the third least. So that's helpful. But um, we're in finals now. It was uh, warm for a few days, but it's back to miserable and cold today. Uh, the positive, it keeps people off the water, except us. It's incredible. We have a 9,800 acre lake and we're often the only ones on it so which is great and at many times i've wished there was more rowing here and then occasionally when you see some of the clubs or high schools around i'm like what are they doing here it's our lake so i have to decide what's more important to me promoting or gathering it all up like a, a a miser it's all our lake all of it like uh gollum from uh, uh, my precious lake but anyway, right now it's miserable. No one's going to the lake but us, so, which we're completely happy about. And I know the women feel the same way. Um, just a little bit more generic, but what, what have you learned about your team this spring on the times you've been out there? Um, I would say compared, uh, often that you got the team and then you had the first day. The first day, last year we had a, a prime mover uh, as Jabbo, my predecessor, used to call a bell cow, and that was Adam Waking, who's now a coach. We don't really have that, but we have all, all the same guys from last year who are all better. So I think average-wise, we're certainly better, and it's shown up. We definitely have faster top end, which matters. You need speed. I'm you know, thinking in another sport like uh, track and field, which is a good comparison, and I'm sure, obviously, if you're a 400 meter runner, you want speed, but it's especially valuable in 1500 and 800 to also have top speed. Obviously, you need endurance, and that's exactly where we fit. And uh, we just have more speed, and we just have to. There's five or four 500 meters in a 2K race. We often break it down. We're as good as just about anybody for the first 500. We just have to lengthen out and be confident even if we get outpowered in the second 500. Um, but we haven't had this kind of top speed in a long time. We just, like against the best team, Syracuse, uh, that we raced, Dartmouth, we were right there at 500, right there. It's just a little too much. So we really worked on the second 500, which matters a lot to keep you in it. But these are uh, a lot of walk-ons in that first date, which the exciting thing, the negative about walk-ons, it's just a lot easier to coach when you get guys who are a world-level medalist, which all our competitors have. It's a lot easier, at least boat speed-wise. Not always easier personality-wise. You've got a bunch of guys, you know, this guy thinks he's the Roger Federer of rowing and, and the Magic Johnson of, uh, you know, sculling. Um, I don't have to usually deal with that. But the exciting thing about the novice is that you never know how good they're going to get when they start with natural talent. And they, it comes fast. I once read that sometimes bamboo trees can grow two feet in one night. Similar with novices occasionally, literally overnight. Wow. And we uh, the strokes a novice, seven man's a novice from Edgewood uh, High School here. Uh, six man rode a little in high school, not much, which we like. Five man's a novice. Novice again, they didn't row in high school. Um, four man's a novice. And the bow three rowed in high school. We had two from Brookfield Central. I'm convinced, I think it's the, I can't kind of remember the league they're in. It's like the Greater Metro League. If I only had athletes from that one league, I think we'd be pretty good. So I wish we had more. That's, the, that's what I'm saying. Um. Bibi talked about this a little bit before when she was in here. Um, the pandemic, like her senior class right now is, is very pandemic related. They started during that. How has that 
affected? Uh, like well, the, it's it, it's the junior class in particular. I think I, I had said this before, and I talked to her, and she had the same issue. There's only three guys. We started with kids we knew were coming here and recruited. There was eight, two of whom were coxswains, and they're gone. And then so that leaves six, and then three of whom were uh, guys who had rowed a little bit in our camps. I think one was a high school rower, and the other two weren't, but they're gone. So that's not that unusual. You have 80 guys show up for freshmen, and only 30 would be back. So that, that particular ratio, but it seems a lot worse. Irony is all these guys are good that are juniors, and you would want more of them. We just don't. And what it has done, the effect is we've kept on the bottom of the team guys who probably wouldn't have been there on a deeper but by next year, when these guys are seniors and there's three, we're finally getting closer to normal. But it's definitely affected us. And it took away the one whole spring of racing. And for the guys that row in the summer, and there's two big races, it took away both of those races. And the next year, it took away the most important one of them, which is in Canada. So three, it's a lot. It still affects us. Whereas none of our competitors were affected like that because in Europe, they just kept racing and rowing. It didn't matter. So, but what am I going to do now? I'm sure BB's the same. Well, you're resigned to it, and uh, you make the best of it. Um, the spring season for you guys is mostly dual races throughout. Um, a lot of the teams you're going to see this weekend. But what is is there a difference between now getting ready for the Eastern sprints? It, to me, I I really enjoyed dual racing because if you like to run small boats, a small boat is anything but an eight. Um, it's a little more personal when it's especially a boat without a coxswain, like a pair or a single. I like the dual racing because it's boom. You get ahead of them or just lurk behind them when you know you're faster and come through. And I would say most of our guys like it a lot, but it can also screw you over a little bit in your mind when you're not super uh, experienced. Um, I just, some of the guys were saying after last week, we raced against Dartmouth, who they knew was really good. I think they were ranked third or something at the time. And, uh, and then we raced against Northeastern, who was also good, but not quite ranked as high. And they, I just think it, it, when we're racing someone a little closer to our speed, you think about, of course I yell. That's what I do when I hear something stupid, I yell. And uh, not as loud as I used to. And I said, this isn't boxing. You're not playing the offensive line against the defensive line. They literally have no control over you, none. All you're doing is granting power over them if you have any kind of expectation. And sure enough, the row in Boston was not good. They did not row anything like they've rowed in the other five dual races. So um, a championship situation is different. It's, well, wait a minute, there's more boats. It's almost like a time trial. It doesn't even become strategic until you're halfway through the race at least. You're trying to get up and get to speed and do your thing. So in some ways, championship racing is easier in many ways because you're not racing against one team. You're just focusing on going as fast as you can. And uh, so, yes, when we can uh, be more consistent, even though this year was we did exactly the same thing last year against uh, Northeast, very similar. It was, oh, well, here, take a length. I mean, literally, it looked like that. And then they were a little open water up, and we just sat there the whole Then we decided to row hard. But we sure made up for it in sprints, so I'm hoping to do the same. The conditions, you, I'm, you always look. You don't want warm, because warm means, the course, you start in the north and go to the south. Therefore, if it's any kind of crosswind, it favors lanes. So ideally, you want colder weather. And I, I think a front's coming through, and I think it's supposed to be a little rainier and colder on Sunday, which is perfect, meaning a cross tailwind. It's often extremely unfair, very unfair. But that's where the seating matters, and that's why you want those better lanes. If I have the best lane and it's completely unfair, what do you mean it's unfair? It's perfect. Well, let's be honest. That's why I look at it. Um, so the conditions today are perfect for practicing for Sunday? Oh, yeah. Well, yes, we left our boats over at Mendota Rowing Club, which we sometimes do, only because the water is going to come up, and we'll row there this afternoon. But tomorrow afternoon will be fine. We'll row them back, and the weather should be good. Again, there's not that many people on the lake. It's, it, uh, we're blessed when it's like that. And one positive thing about rowing here is that most of the – and we do have our summer rowing, 
but the college rowing, it doesn't overlap much with recreational boating. So therefore, there aren't that many boats out. But occasionally there are, and they get mad at us, so we give a wide berth, especially the fishermen. It's like literally you go hundreds of meters away from them. I don't want to be near. I've had one meet me on the dock once, threatened to kill me. Okay, another one down to the Rock River threatened to shoot us all. That was uh, about five years ago. And I talked to UW police about it, but fortunately I think it was just a one-off drunk guy. But I've learned, avoid at all costs. <laughs> Anybody that looks like they'll be irritated by you being near them. So even though I will point out, it's pretty poor judgment threatening to shoot a college team. That's, you wanna to go to prison? If you haven't already been there, it's probably an easy way to do it, so. Um, can you handicap the Eastern Sprints field at all? God, it's pretty, pretty close, the, I would say, at the top. None of the, the fastest teams have been dominant. Harvard showed real well last weekend against Northeastern, but Yale is the favorite. But concerning they have multiple Olympic uh, – I mean, there's a num numerous Olympians in these races, and they have one Olympic gold medal. You can, it'll be interesting if you can't win the Eastern Sprints because then you can make the argument it's easier to win an Olympic gold medal than it is to win the Sprints. He didn't win the national championship last year. I guess they should have had two Olympic gold medals because one wasn't good enough. And, uh, but Yale's definitely pretty good. But Darwin was close to them. And uh, so was Princeton. Princeton has really been this surprise isn't really the right word because they're always going to be good, but especially good. According to uh, a whisper in my ear, Fraser Ennis, who's one of our, uh, he's here kind of as a, a student uh, volunteer. He's a Shane student from Scotland, and he does actually a, a North American rowing podcast with his other Scottish buddy who's in. And he says the reason why Princeton's so good is they have the top British uh, recruit that's a freshman this year. So I'll, whatever, all I know is they're faster. And uh, who else? we had Yale, we had Princeton, and Harvard is Harvard has five, I believe, in their first eight guys world medalists. That's senior world medalists. That's not under twenty three or junior. I think in the entire history of our program, we have ten, and they have five in their first eight, and they've lost races. Tough for them, but that's the way it goes sometimes. And then um, the Dartmouth is definitely competitive, and then Syracuse has been great. They've had a a few year run of older uh, international transfers. In other words, guys that were in college, and I want to say their average age is probably a year or so older than most of the rest of them. And the coach has done a great job, and they're doing quite well. So it, all those teams are in the mix, whereas often you just say, this team is probably going to win. I can't say that this year. Um, one guy you've talked about a few times this year after races is a freshman. Uh, oh, Eli Strassman. Yeah, I just. Yeah. Um, right when we came back, we put him in the one a bit. In the worst case scenario, if you have a mentally weak team, changing lineups a lot can set them off. These guys aren't that way. And all it did was do what it's supposed to do when you switch lineups around, which is create tension in a positive way. And, oh, man, i got to keep my seat. i got to go. And, and then we put him back in the two. I think it was on Saturday. I forgot. And talking to guys that were in the 2V, they said, oh, he definitely rose better. It's still not pretty. He reminds me, you know, there's no question that many of the, the competitors we have, they're Formula One. We're not even, he's not even NASCAR. He's like the truck series. Or even those little dirt cars, you know what I mean, that like Tony Stewart liked to drive. And they'd always, you'd see videos of them hitting each other on the wheels and flying out. That's what he is. And... uh Incredibly tough and hard, but not pretty. So, but Strassman is good. He's gifted in a, a pulling way that is unbelievably uh, rare for a first-year guy. They don't pull like that, and they're not that hard. And against Northeastern, or against, uh, uh, yeah, it was against Northeastern. They had a pretty close. They're not. We're not good in the first 250, which comes down to skill. But we're just as fast as Northeastern and Dartmouth in the race. The problem is you have to learn how to be quicker, and we've been working on that. And I don't know how much quicker they are in the first, but we'll see. But 
Uh, Northeastern was allowed to. They cheered and yelled a lot. I think all these guys must have watched, uh, what was it, Braveheart, right? Weren't guys always screaming all the time before they go into battle? <laughs> I think so, right? You know, I've, And a lot of these teams are like this. Like my son plays Division One football, and they're cheery, but they're not even like that. Like, I don't know what's with whether your rowers trying to pretend that you're macho men. You're not. You're, you're seriously hard guys, but you're not macho men who are, you know, coming into town to chop heads off. But anyway, they, they, they yelled a lot. And, but every time I heard it, you could hear it in the boat. I, I don't know if he's, it didn't matter who was yelling. He thought they were yelling for him, I felt. And the boat bah, jumped every time. I love that. I've never seen that before. It made him better. I've talked to the coach and the coach was laughing. He goes, yeah, I got to tell those guys to shut up. They got to be quieter. Don't make it better for the other team. Anyway, he, uh, exciting guy, very unlikely when you see him on the shore. You know, there's guys that can win the shore contest. Like, whoa, look at that guy. And uh, I'm always skeptical of those guys, by the way, that you got to show me in the water. We'll see how good you are. He's not winning the shore competition. You're thinking, oh, well, he's probably just, you know, some nerd or something. He does not look classic, but who cares? And I'm excited for him this year. He'll row here this summer. We just need more of them. There's not one coach in the history of any sport that doesn't say we need more. We're the ultimate, uh, uh, I don't know, we're greedy. That's for dang sure. What does he actually have? Like, It doesn't sound like something maybe like the guy behind him can imitate. He sounds well, like the good thing about the guy behind Olin Frederick, he's a, a senior, has rowed for a long time. So he's he likes to talk. Olin, he'd be a good coach. And he's always willing to have an opinion. So he loves the fact, well, I got someone who can't even move, who has to listen to me and is willing to listen to me. So it's perfect. I once heard a story about a, uh, one of the best, I think the best British rowers of all time. And one of his buddies, who I knew some, George Nash, who rode a Cambridge Olympic champion, would row with him. And this guy was even the best there is. Constantine Lelutis is his name. And... Uh, He's, George said he would, he never said anything. And he would talk to him all the time and even criticize him and correct him. And he'd never get thin skinned. He just made the changes. That, that's who this kid reminds me of. On a, it's very early. It's only seven or eight months in. I admire things I wasn't. Thick skinned? No. Any comment to me, I would get uptight about. So I really admire that in guys. That, and, you can pretty much tell him and to do anything, and he'll do it. We just need more. He, I asked once his dad, I met his dad, and I said, why is he like this? Oh, because he swam in high school. And I just said, look, I don't want to be flipped, but if it was that simple, that's all we'd recruit as swimmers. It's not. It, he was born that way and then happened to swim in high school. It's not what made him so hard. So. But there's a lot of the freshmen doing quite well. There's two other freshmen in the, in the second varsity. So they're the kind of guys that after a few months, if they rode in high school at the level we start them at, they'd be the top recruits in the United States. They're that good. So, but again, we need more. Uh, just one more question. Um, it's graduation weekend. It's pretty much every week. I ask BB the same question. Do you guys do anything special since it's graduation week with the seniors? Is it just... It doesn't BB's matter. The, par organized. the parents care about that. Not that, that matters. Put me on a spot or what? Dia, uh, BB is way more organized with that kind of thing. And um, they had a, an awards thing already. We, we do whatever that is at the very end at our championships. In other words, get, we wait till the end of the year before we decide some of these things. Um, no, that's the answer. But I would love to. Now that we have an incredible director of ops, Tracy Rosenfeld. She'll probably watch this and next year, Tracy, we're going to get this done. We want to keep those parents happy. I mean, the, uh, she has already done an amazing job. When you have, a, they can talk to the parents. I don't say deal with them. They don't need to be dealt with, but to communicate with them. And the parents always want to be helpful. So, uh, yes, we, ha we should do more. I'm just, I'm not good at that. We need someone else to help. But, uh, yeah, graduation, sometimes we're here for it, but not this time.
uh, hardly ever, actually, but occasionally we are. Uh, a lot of us that row didn't go to their own graduation. That doesn't mean I should not care about theirs because I didn't. I just need to have help organizing something. But tonight we'll go to the Title IX, uh, the uh, debut of the uh, big uh, video about the celebration of women's rowing. That'll be fun. It's about it as far as it's vaguely, only vaguely related, related to uh, graduation. I have to, that's all I got. Um, I thought that no one would ask any questions, so we were joking that Paul, though he's an old hand, that I should have a hand puppet, maybe like Sesame Street, and I'd ask myself in funny voice. Bo had a better, he said I should come in as an old time newsman and have a cigar and a hat. And I, hey, Mr. Clack, uh, how's it look this weekend? But Paul is getting good. No one ever asks questions. But Paul, like it or not, has been here a long time, so he knows what to ask. And Tracy, actually, I told her that. I'm, she, um, I said, yeah, no one asks questions. She came up with 20 questions that if I needed to, I would just read. First one being, for example, will ro any rowers on the team row after college? Answer is yes. What percent of rowers uh, who are walk-ons that haven't rowed before? How many Olympians? Blah, blah, blah. They're all awesome. How many Olympic golds does Bo Hoopman have? What's your big? These are all great. We'll save them. Yeah, she's already, uh, she, and she literally cranked these out in minutes. So, Tracy, thank you. I'll give those to Paul next time. We're just going to go down the list. So. This is the last of these press conferences this year, right? Yeah.